الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Guys, before I tell you what we talked about today Can we give Jimmy a shout out A.K.A. Sam He's the guy who's arranging the Nasir session stuff Can we please give him a shout out Jimmy, pat yourself on the back And Johnny Right here Johnny Ames A.K.A. Mr. Aman can you pat yourself on the back for recording and editing Allah Barry? Give it, give it a proper pat, man. A real pat. Or are you trying to show that you're too hench that your arm can't go all the way back now, Allah Barry? All them pull-ups you've been doing. Come on. Come on. Don't, hey, if you cut this out, I'll be angry. Nah, bro. I'm your older brother, man. I'm like 10 years older. I'm a whole decade older than you. You're staying in, bro. Keeping it natural. <laughs> Um, single Jim, huh? Jimmy single, huh? <laughs> if you're interested in Jimmy, I'm joking. <laughs> anyway, listen. Um, today's uh, Nasir session was um, actually really interesting. We talked about a lot, sister. She was um, we kind of really dug deep. Um, so we started off talking about how to worship Allah with sincerity. Then we talked about how to deal with loneliness um, Like you know if you leave off a haram relationship For the sake of Allah Because it's wrong But you still feel lonely Like how to cope with the loneliness um, How to connect yourself to Allah And also we spoke about How to deal with the trauma of being sexually molested um, So uh, subhanAllah um, A lot actually It's quite heavy Um I think you guys will benefit inshallah And as you know the drill Click the um, Click the bell button Next to the subscribe button It's the first time You're coming here Because people who regularly Watch this program Have clicked the bell button Right? Right? <laughs> um, that's Not for me I don't care <laughs> But you will get An immediate notification So you don't miss out On that Which inshallah Ta'ala be a benefit For you inshallah also, if, you're, if you want to be on the next show and you've got something that you know, you'd know you like me to possibly help you with, if I have the ability to help, then please email at nasirsession.gmail.com. Can I just also say, guys, I'm not the one that's responding to the emails. It's all Jimmy. And people are getting like angry at me in the comments and you don't respond to emails. I don't even do that. It's Jimmy. So can, when you get angry, please, can you get angry at Jimmy? I'm, firstly, don't even be angry because we're getting hundreds of emails. We're trying our best to get in, to in touch with everyone. Uh, but if you are going to get angry And you're going to drop hateful comments Or you're going to send hateful emails Please direct them to Jimmy Not me Jimmy you've responded to everyone now right? Yeah. There's one brother in the last video Who's just angry He's just angry He must have commented like Five six times But I don't even think he sent an email Because I went back and I looked I actually messaged him Bro send one now I'll open it personally But he didn't respond Anyway it's Jimmy alright Anyway listen let's start the show Assalamu alaikum Wa alaikum assalam How are you doing sister, you okay? I'm fine, alhamdulillah, how are you? Masha'Allah, I'm, I'm very good, alhamdulillah So how can I help you today? Um, to be honest, it's just been a lot mm -hmm. Like, through the email, I'm sure you've read it already um, oh, I, I did take um, a look at it Yeah when you sent initially But if you could maybe Give me like a brief Rundown of it Inshallah ta'ala Just to refresh my memory Like I'm just trying to Find some advice For like how to get Through doing stuff For the sake of Allah mm -hmm. And like not doing it For anybody else mm -hmm. Or just having that mindset And mm -hmm. Also to like How to get over something That's not halal for you That you really want it But you know it's not halal Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So could you like expand a bit? Because it's um um I could I could be more accurate in my advice if you give me a little bit more details. Yeah, um like growing up you get told to do this, do that, this is correct, this is wrong, pray this, do that. Mm -hmm. And obviously you're used to doing it, mm -hmm. but sometimes you just like you just go into like some, you get the thought of like, are you actually doing it for the sake of Allah? Or is this what you're just kind of like used to doing it? Or you just get told to do this? Mm -hmm. 
yeah like how do you know that your intention is like actually for the sake of Allah hmm. and like you're being fully committed to it okay it's a beautiful question um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Allah said that we only commanded you to worship Allah with sincerity so um, it's a very good question because since sincerity if a person doesn't have sincerity in their worship it will not be accepted and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa um, you know from his sunnah and also from the Quran we learn two things um, are the pillars for every action to be accepted the first pillar is sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second pillar is to follow the Prophet alayhi wa and how he did it those are the two pillars yeah um, so you're asking a very good question um, and um, before I give you some practical steps of how to uh, kind of make your actions a bit more sincere inshallah ta'ala or work towards sincerity I'd like to give you the good news to let you know that one of the signs of a person who's sincere is a person who's constantly questioning his intentions or her intentions that's actually a sign that's a good sign a person who doesn't even yeah. think about their intentions is a person I'd worry for but a person who's sitting there actually thinking, am I doing it for Allah? No. That shows that you're actually working on your intentions and you're conscious about your intentions. So that's actually a really good sign. And I would be very hopeful for you that inshallah ta'ala, you're, you're being sincere. But I must remind you of something and that is uh, the whispers of shaitan. You see, one of the ways yeah. that shaitan comes to a person and stops them from doing a good deed is he tells them, hey, you're being insincere. Hey, you are being insincere And then what that person starts to say is oh, I'm being insincere, let me not do it You know what this is? This is actually a hidden insincerity If you stop doing the action Because you feel you're being insincere Well, now There was an act of worship you were going to do for the sake of Allah, right? Yeah. But now you're stopping it for the sake of shaitan And that is insincerity so yeah. the scholars with the advice is that when you get that feeling of am I being insincere, just do more. Do more. Yeah. You, you probably heard the statement that Shaitan used to walk on the other side of this road when Umar used yeah. to walk on one side, yeah. Shaitan used to walk on the other side. Do you know why that was? Because every time Shaitan would whisper something to Umar, Umar would just do more. Until Shaitan said, you know what? I'm making this guy better. Let me just leave. So you know for example If someone's about to give charity And shaitan makes you feel like Oh you're showing off Scholars say at that time yeah. Give more Give more Don't stop Definitely don't stop But give more So that's one way to fix your intentions um, Another way Is to seek knowledge uh, The salaf would say the th That we cured Our bad intentions By seeking knowledge And primarily knowledge of Allah the reason I say Allah is because you want to make sure that you're worshipping Allah for His sake and not for the sake of your parents and not for the sake of anyone that you might love or anyone you're trying to please or impress or show off to, right? So if that's the case, yeah. then you, then the only way you're going to really worship Allah for His sake is if you know how great He is and how pleasing Him is way greater than trying to please your parents or anyone else to the point where you don't even care uh, to please them through worship And you only care to please Allah through worship Because of course only Allah's pleasure Should be sought through worship Because that's what worship is for Allah right um, Yeah. So, so um, What you do Is that you get to know Allah As Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim said That no one ever gets to know the creator Who the creator really is And then picks the creation over him Do you see? If you get to know who the creator yeah. is You will never pick the creation over the creator You will always pick the creator first So you must get to know him So I don't know if you've seen this series I have on YouTube It's called 99 Names of Allah Do you know it? Have you seen um, it? I'm, cu I'm currently going through it Mashallah, which which name are you on? I've just started it because I watched your previous video mm -hmm. And you recommended it So I was like I should have a look at it too Fantastic So please go through it And I promise you as you go through that series it's going to change your life I need to actually finish it Inshallah ta'ala But I think there's a good Like 10 episodes on there at least 11 10, 11 episodes yeah. So And each one Like I think most of them are Over an hour long So go through it Like really go through it Like go through it religiously Inshallah ta'ala And I think that will really help you So 
I, I hope that answers your first question about sincerity. Yeah. How, how does that um, help? Yeah, like, it actually gives, like, a wide background and stuff about everything and how to do, actually do it. Fantastic. Fantastic. So what was the second question now? You said about leaving off things that are haram or something like that. Yeah, because I was in a haram relationship. Like, mm -hmm. my love messed with me. But I and got out of it. Of course. Amazing, fantastic, mashallah. And because I we used to be quite close and stuff. but And then I realized that it's actually not what I want. And stuff like, I just knew it wasn't correct. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't actually bringing me happiness. MashaAllah. May Allah bless you. It may, I mean, I made loads of dua to Allah, like, to take this person out of my life if it's not correct. Mm -hmm. And by the will of Allah, it actually happened. Alhamdulillah. And I don't, know, I don't know if I'm supposed to be happy or sad because now, like, I just want that company back type of thing. Uh -huh. Not the individual, like, himself. Sure. But, but human company. Yeah. That's really natural. That's not. That's that's not. That's not unnatural. That's not unnatural. Um, so, um, a couple things. Number one, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in the Quran, "Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khair wa huwa khairun wa huwa khairun lah." Huwa khairul. Allah said, "Kutiba alaykum al-qital wa huwa." Perhaps you don't like something, but it is good for you. And perhaps you love something, you want something, but it's bad for you. Allah said, Wallahu ya'lamu. Allah is the one who knows. He knows what's good and what's bad for you. And Allah said, You and me, we don't know. So we might love something and want something and think it's good or bad or whatever have you. Um, we don't know Allah knows So sometimes you go through something in life It's very good for you The reason I'm saying this is because you said I don't know whether to be happy or sad Allah took him away from yeah. you Allah took him away He has ability And he has, and his ability with things that he does Are due to wisdoms So there was a wisdom yeah. And that wisdom is Always man, um, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's going to be bringing about the greater good so be happy basically that's what i'm trying to tell you <laughs> be happy you know sometimes you know you might get sick and it seems like well why am i sick it's good for you it's good for you that's the beauty of the qadr of allah azza wa jal that even when something bad happens because you know we believe in the good of the qadr and the bad of the qadr the things that are good and the bad we believe in it but even when something bad is happening there's a greater wisdom behind it there's a greater good that's bit, like, for example, you might be sick or you might be going through the pain of loneliness, but guess what's happening? Your sins are being expiated. Okay, Alhamdulillah, you might not even have any sins; they're all expiated. Okay, now just your good deeds are piling up. Do you see? There's a, there's a, there's a beautiful benefit and a wisdom. Now, um, I think what could be a beautiful opportunity for you to take from this loneliness that you're feeling right now, um, apart from trying to find companionship in a halal way. In a husband Is to find companionship with Allah Find companionship with Allah Because Allah Is The Greatest Wallahi You know Allah said uh, amanu Those who believe in Allah They are the ones who are most intense In their love for Allah but other people from mankind, they love other things the way that they should love Allah. They love other things the way that they love Allah, or the way they're supposed to love Allah. But the believers, they put Allah first. And Allah said, إِذْ تَبَرَّأَ الَّذِينَ تُبِعُوهُ مِنَ الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُ Allah said, sorry, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُ لَوْ أَنَّ لَنَا وَإِذْ تَبَرَّأَ الَّذِينَ تُبِعُوهُ مِنَ وَإِذْ تَبَرَّأَ الَّذِينَ تُبِعُوهُ مِنَ الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُ وَرَأَوُ الْعَذَابَ وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ you know the people who followed and loved these other people more than Allah or equal to Allah on the day of judgment when they see the punishment, you know, asbab, that relationship and that love they had for them is going to disconnect. So, you know, sometimes you get disconnected from someone in this life and you say to yourself, oh, it's so sad, I've become disconnected. 
But that that disconnection due to that false attachment and that love for that person that really is a fake love or a false love or an unhealthy love because it's not founded in the love of Allah, it's founded independently of Allah. And especially when it's based on sin, it's definitely independently of Allah's love. You know, when you love something, you're supposed to love it for the sake of Allah, right? So that's yeah. the pure love, the real love. So when it's not founded in that way and it's and, and, and it starts to challenge your love for Allah and you start to obey that thing and love that thing the way that you are supposed to obey and love Allah, then it becomes unhealthy for you. And that is a relationship that will break up on the day of judgment. That relationship becomes severed on the day of judgment. The pain that you would feel on that day is a lot more than the pain on this day. It's better for that person to be removed from you now than to be removed from you on the day of judgment. Because on the day of judgment, you know, that attachment could be shirk and it takes you to the hellfire. And Allah said, that when the people are put into hellfire, if they will say, you know, uh, they will say we swear by Allah we used to be in clear cut misguidance we used to make you equal to Allah how? in love we used to love you the way we used to love Allah do you see? and on the day of judgment yeah. when they see the people cut off you know uh, Allah says إِذْ تَبَرَّعَ الَّذِينَ تَبِعُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوا وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوا لَوْ أَنَّ لَنَا كَرَّةً فَنَتَبَرَّأَ مِنْهُمْ كَمَا تَبَرَّأُوا مِنَّا The one who used to follow on the day of judgment he will say if only or she will say if only I was given another chance I would have left him I would have left him the way he left me because he would leave you on the day of judgment he would have left you on the day of judgment so you would say ah if only I got another chance I would leave him the way that he left me Because he'll leave you high and dry In this life or the next So it's better that You know you walk away from him now Or that he leaves you now So that you can Cut off these false attachments To these human beings And become attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Do you see I always say a woman yeah. Should be so lost in her love for Allah That a man has to fall in love with Allah To find her Subhanallah. And that I promise you sister Wallahi Having a connection with Allah will solve all your problems and all your pains. Like Allah, some you know, you know, like you know, the the du'a that the Prophet taught us to make in state of distress is yeah. to say Allah, Allah, Rabbi la ushriku bihi shay'a, which means Allah, Allah, to say His name, Rabbi, which is one of His descriptions. La ushriku bihi shay'a. And then to say I will never associate or make anyone equal to you Like it's profound That why and how does the name Allah Allah Rabbi la ushriku bihi shay'a Take away your distress and sorrow That's the connection of the believers to Allah The moment they say his name They're reminded of who he is Ah it just makes everything feel good again But that cannot happen unless you know him Pastor who knows Allah Yeah go on sorry How do you get to know him? Like you know him But you've got the knowledge and stuff But how do you like implement it into your life To know that Allah is there Like to build that connection And he's the first one to be that If you're in sort of like distress or anything You fall down to him You carry on learning about him And what you learn about it You implement it So for example that 99 names of Allah series One of the best ways to know Allah Is through his names Because each name of his Has a characteristic of him in it so you're learning about his characteristics, subhanahu wa ta'ala, his attributes through his names. You're learning who he is. So for example, the moment you learn Allah's name, Ar-Rahman, mercy, then you start to live reminding yourself of his mercy and hoping for his mercy. The moment you learn his name, Ar-Razaq, the provider, you live according to that name, you implement that name, you learn the du'as connected to that name, you rely upon him for your rizq. Do you see? The moment you learn the name yeah. Al-Musawwir, the designer, the one who designed you in that way, you become happy with the way that you look, you know, uh, without having to try and change your creation. And, you know, like women do things now, for example, they pluck their eyebrows, they uh, wear makeup because they just don't feel comfortable in their flesh and their skin. But you learn the name Al-Musawwir, the one who fashioned you and created you in that way. And then you learn those verses connected to it where he said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ I created the human in the best form. I fashioned him or 
her in the best form You're the most beautiful form You know there's no form better than your form You have the most beautiful form Allah says it And you know you take these ayat in And you believe it And you implement it And you know You live according to those names You begin to know him And then it propels you And projects you to worshipping him When you're praying your salah You're remembering he's a simi All hearing Al basir All seeing You know and he's listening to you When you're praying He's seeing you Whilst you're praying Subhanahu wa ta'ala And it's increasing your iman Because you're living with Allah Azza wa Jal's names now Do you see? And implementing those yeah. names It will change your life sister It will change your life Inshallah 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 Does that help? Yeah. It helps, yeah? Yeah. So I want you to go through the series and then inshallah I want to, you know, hear your progress. So you can inshallah. get in touch with our team via WhatsApp as you've been. And uh, we want to see your progress inshallah ta'ala. And if there's anything that you need in the future, we're here to help to the best of our ability. Inshallah. Um, Sister. Do you don't yeah. have any of those guys on your phone that you're in touch with right now? Do you? Pardon. Those any of those guys that you mentioned? Um, do you are you in touch with them on your phone right now by any chance or whatever have you? Do they have um, access yeah. to? You? Do you want to just stop? Yeah. Do you want to start off just by blocking them right now while you're on the phone to me? Uh, okay. But this is for life now. You're blocking them for life. Inshallah, yeah. Inshallah, yeah. Look at that. May Allah bless you. The fact that you're doing this right now, you know, the fact that you're doing this right now, it might be the reason, the one thing, because only Allah knows how hard this is for you, you know, because you're craving companionship and whatnot, but you're going to cut them off for the sake of Allah. This might be the single reason why Allah has mercy on you and accepts you into paradise. We don't know that one deed that we do that will cause us to enter into paradise. Do you see? Yeah. And what am I supposed to do if we see each other like live, like outside? Like how do you get about with that? You gotta be like Maryam Salamun Alayha. You know, Jibreel came to Maryam. Uh you know when he came to her to give her the when she was pregnant with Isa. Yeah. No to yeah, to so so to give her the glad tidings of the fact that Allah was gonna give her a son. You know, she didn't even wait for him to speak. You know what she said? She said Inni uh she said Inni Uidu um she said uh, I think I might have made a mistake in the ayat uh, uh, I think I said the ayat wrong But she said basically I seek refuge in Allah from you If you fear him yeah. So she was tough She didn't even wait for him to say Hey you know I'm an angel Allah sent me She just saw a guy She said get away from me I don't want anything to do with you So that's it sister It'll be tough And don't worry about hurting his feelings He's a man who'll get over it What will happen is you'll make Allah happy You'll make Allah so happy with you Allah, You'll make him so happy with you And wallahi Allah will then in return make you happy If you try to please the people to displease Allah Allah will become displeased with you and Allah will make those people displease you. But if you displease the people to make Allah, Allah will become pleased with you and eventually the people will become pleased with you as well. So cut him off. If he, if he gets offended, men are very good at emotionally manipulating. If he starts being all, you know, oh, listen, you know, tell him, bro, stop moving, stop, stop moving soft. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's the kind of guy you don't even want. It's a feminine man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You should take it in the chin and keep the step in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You shouldn't get emotional like that. And if he bugs okay. you too much, then subhanAllah, yeah. we might have to get in contact with him and say, yo, bro, back off. <laughs> okay. Inshallah. You think you can be confident Inshallah. like that and just cut him up, as in, not not with a knife, but, you know, like as in, yeah. <laughs> just cut him off, like, <laughs> stay away from him. You think you can be confident like that, yeah? Inshallah, yeah. I, I, I believe in you. I believe in you that you can do it, Inshallah. It and um, personally, like, I'm a person who just interacts with both boys and girls. So, like, I've got everyone, like, like, I'm, I'm just, like, friendly with everyone. And, like, how do I just stop that as well? Like, I can cut 
with certain individual individual that I'm close with, but like So you got car for all the guys? I could go to college, we do stuff together, we do like That's what I'm saying, you gotta stop. <laughs> you gotta stop. You know why? Because you see, as you see, look, this is the problem with us that we don't come to Islam completely and then we wonder why we're sad and we feel this loneliness inside of our heart. Sins they create a sadness in a person. They create a you know, they create mental distress, they create low self esteem. You know, the, you know, Imam Ibn Qayyim mentioned in you know, in his book, you know, a person loses confidence due to sins, they start feeling lonely, they start feeling depressed, you know, they like so and one sin leads to another sin. So it's like you're trying to purify your heart by learning about Allah and worshipping him, but you know, you're also every time you're progressing, you're also regressing to an extent when you when you do that as well. Sister, you've got to come to Allah completely. You know, Allah, you know, Allah said, No one turns away from the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam except that the person is dim witted. And then Allah describes Ibrahim how he was. He said, The moment Allah told him, Submit to me. Submit. He said, Aslam to li Rabbil Alameen. So I submit to you, Allah. Allah told him, Leave your child and the mother of your child in a barren valley inside of a desert where there yeah. wasn't even a well of water because the well of Zamzam came after, right? Yeah. <laughs> he just did it. And look at the woman. Hajj, she said, why are you leaving us? He kept walking. Why are you leaving us? He kept walking. Third time, why are you leaving? No, she said, did Allah tell you to do it? And he said, Allah told me. She said, then Allah will take care of us. Like, just do whatever Allah says. Allah told Ibrahim, alayhi salam, sacrifice your son. Ibrahim spoke to his son. He said, my father, you will find me patient. Sacrifice me. Do as you've been commanded. Allah was just testing him. Allah was just testing Allah didn't want him to slaughter his son. Allah was just testing him. But look at that. Allah yeah. tested the prophets by seeing, will you, will you, are you ready to sacrifice your kids for me? And we're just being asked to sacrifice our friends. Friends that... Don't care about us. They're gonna they're gonna run away from us on the day of judgment. They're gonna become my enemies on the day of judgment. Especially you probably know more about the religion than these people because you've got a religious upbringing and a religious background, right? Allah and Badik. So they're gonna grab you on the day of judgment and say, Ah, oh, you, you knew this stuff. Why did you hang around with us? <laughs> Do you see? Yeah. Yeah, sister, you just gotta cut these people off. Trust me. Trust me. Seeking knowledge and good companionship, those are the two keys. Okay. Just do Inshallah. it. Do you, just trust me. Do it. The moment you submit, suddenly an ease enters inside of your heart. Trust me. So, like me, I always mention a story. It was very hard for me to grow my beard, and I used to make excuses for years. But the moment I said, "You know what? Let me just do it," the thing that I used to find so hard and to think, "How am I going to do it?" became one of the most beloved acts of worship to me. Like, like, where did it come? I don't know. Great example was the companions. They were faced with an army of what? 10,000 people surrounding them But the moment they stayed firm And they firm in the promise of Allah What did Allah say happened? It increased them in iman and submission You know And then Allah gave them the victory Allah made it easy Imagine looking down at 10,000 soldiers That have surrounded you Ready to kill you Slaughter you Take your women and children But it became easy for them They didn't find difficulty yeah. in it Because Allah places that iman in your heart When they submitted And then Allah gave them victory Allah will give you victory sister Allah will give you everything that you want. But remember, you got to take that step towards Allah. Does that make sense? Yeah. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. One last thing. Sure. Um, in the past, I've been like, I've been molested and it's not nice. And the coping mechanism which I used wasn't the correct way to go about it. And I kind of left that behind. But now... Like as time goes by, it also comes back, mm -hmm. and it's like very hard to deal with. Like, mm -hmm. like it just you just get flashbacks, which which and then you just want to go and start doing the same mm -hmm. how you dealt out back in the past and stuff. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah, I'm so sorry to hear that. And I ask Allah to relieve you of this distress. Allahumma ameen. Ameen. The advice that I'll give you, sister, is that 
Allah mentioned Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'inu al-qulub Verily with the remembrance of Allah Do the hearts find peace You will find peace from this trauma With the remembrance of Allah and The remembrance of Allah Has an effect after getting to know him first Which takes me back to my original point after you get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Getting to know Allah solves so many problems in our life It takes away sadness, takes away loneliness, increases your iman Takes you to paradise, your du'as are accepted, your reward is intensified Also, it takes away all trauma, all sadness, everything Because whatever the pain and suffering it is No matter how sad and traumatic and painful and difficult it was it becomes outweighed by the intensity of the joy of Allah And that relationship with Him You see Like the same way whatever it was That vice that you probably went towards To try and help you cope with it That mechanism It helped you cope yeah. in the moment right But then it probably made things worse As time went on and whatever have you But yeah. So this is also a mechanism But this is a solution long term And it's foundational and it's a prescribed, legislated one. The moment you give in to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then you learn about him, and then you remember him, it's like it's like every time you start to remember the trauma, just remember Allah. And then the remembrance of Allah outweighs anything else, and you live peace. As long as you have Allah on your mind, you're like, you know what, I'm cool, I'm so cool, I'm so cool. I have a Lord who takes care of me, he's going to take care of me, who loves me, I love him, he's providing for me, he's doing everything for me. Like you, you're so cool. The moment you remember Allah, that's why Allah said, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al qulub. In the remembrance of Allah, the hearts they find peace. Does that answer your question? Yeah I also Don't think it would be a bad idea um, To get some Counselling But Get it from a person I've tried that Have you tried it? Okay But if yeah, you tried it I mean With I, like Yeah sorry Not a Muslim Person So yeah. like Obviously, I didn't tell them what the situation was, but I was just telling them how I'm just upset mm -hmm. and I've been through stuff. And they're just saying to deal with stuff like I don't think was the correct way to go around with Islam. So I just kind of like was like, yeah, okay, whatever. So here's the issue. Um, I mean, look, I, I'll be honest with you. I suggested the counseling thing just because that's what people have told me to do. And I didn't want to be irresponsible. And not mention something that could be a means of benefit But definitely the prerequisite that I always give is If you go to a counsellor Make sure it's a Muslim one That knows their religion Because Counselling is basically like therapy for the mind And the mind The soul The heart Whatever you want to call it uh, Or whatever they call it rather It is the heart and the mind and, and the soul This is something that Allah You know Created and Allah's religion Knows best how to deal with it Or shows best how to deal with it So the counsellor must have some Islamic background uh, To be able to Give you correct advice But even then Look, me and my personal life Without opening up too much I've gone through madness Okay, I don't really open up about my personal life Or whatever have you And Even some of my close friends don't know Like, I've gone through trauma Like I'm not trying to say I've gone through what you've gone through, I know what you've gone through, no. But like I know and Allah knows I've gone through madness in my life. I've gone through absolute madness. And I never had to go through normal counselling, alhamdulillah. I never had no suicidal thoughts. I never, you know, had any of them. Alhamdulillah, I just dealt with it the way Allah told me to deal with it. Yeah. Allah said do dhikr Allah said learn about him Allah said submit to him You know I, I just I just I just came to, to Tawheed And I, well I didn't Allah brought me to Tawheed I asked him And he accepted my dua And brought me All praise and thanks to him And you know Even now Like I deal with so much <laughs> Like Even as I'm speaking to you right now I got a burden on my shoulders I don't even care I'm like, I mean, I, I care enough to like take care of it, handle it, but like the pain of it doesn't really affect me. I lie if it doesn't get to me every now and again, but 
I'm chilling, I'll be honest with you. Alhamdulillah, I have Allah. And I want that for you as well. And that's why I'm imparting this advice to you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. MashaAllah. Anything else I can help you with before we before we end? No. No, not really. Is, do you think I should just leave this and let it go? Or take further like action about it? Uh, about the final thing that you just mentioned? Allah. Yeah. So I believe that that pain will, like I said, it'll be good to to um, get the uh, counseling if you find an Islamic counselor or whatever have you. But my experience, that stuff is all secondary. The main thing is connecting to Allah and leave, yeah. let Him deal with everything for you and let Him bring about, you know, all the goodness for you. Like you know, Allah is not unaware. You know, and Allah is the best to, to, to bring you ease and bring you joy and bring you success and take your difficulties away. Yeah. Hope that answers your question. Yeah. Inshallah. It does. Jazakallah. Barakallah. Feet, my sister, listen, you take care of yourself, okay? And you too. Oh, okay then. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Finally, Taha, we're going to be able to produce videos so fast on this new powerful Mac, inshallah ta'ala. Bro, get off the Mac. Oh, my bad, bro. Your bad, for real. Yeah, I didn't see you there, man. What do you mean you didn't see me? I'm right here. Now, obviously, how am I supposed to see you, bro? At the time we're recording this video, you've not been edited in yet. Say wallahi. Yeah, you've been edited. No way. Yeah, post-production, my dude. That's G. mad. Whole time, K visuals, obviously, as you can Masha. see. More money came in, we were able to hire a better visual team. That's why we can do stuff like this. But anyway, bro, listen, I need to talk to the people, okay? Bro, do your thing. I'm, I'm just going to sit here and listen, inshallah. In the first place. So now I want to brothers and sisters. As you guys saw, literally, about just over 25 hours ago, we put out a video saying we need to raise money for new media equipment so we could spread la ilaha illallah across the world wide web. And alhamdulillah, rabbil I mean, you guys, almost with Allah's permission, have managed to reach the target, which means we're going to be closing that fundraiser very shortly because we're just a few thousand away from our ultimate goal. Now, here's the thing. Do you know what that means for you? That means you miss out on an opportunity to get mad reward. Because as I showed you in the last video from that one camera, we managed to reach 20 million people. That means there's a potential of 20 million rewards just of YouTube. Imagine all the multiple different cameras, the different computers and the things that, that, we, that we purchase from these donations and then all the data that we spread across the internet, the kind of reward you'll get, you see. Now when that fundraiser closes, your opportunity is gone. And I'd advise you, please don't miss out on that. And there was a companion at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet told the, the Sahaba that there's going to be 70,000 from this Ummah that are going to go to Jannah without any accountability, which means no questioning. Day judgment, straight to paradise. So one of the companions, his name was Urkasha, he stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, he said, make dua to Allah that I'm from those 70,000. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Anta minhu. He said, you're from them. It's done. It's done. Another companion heard it. He was like, oh, you just have to do that? He said, ask the Prophet. So he got up and he said, Ya Rasulullah. He said, make dua to Allah to make me from them as well. And the Prophet said to him, Sabaqa ka biha Urkasha. He said, Urkasha beat to it. That was a... Limited offer. <laughs> that was it. That was your, your, you missed the window of opportunity. So, what that shows you is that don't let someone beat you to the punch. Don't let someone beat you with the opportunity to get that kind of reward. I mean, think about it, man. We've got sins, but I have an opportunity to buy a piece of equipment, which there's going to be multiple rewards are going to come from it. Rewards in the hundreds and thousands, rewards in the millions, potentially, inshallah ta'ala. That's not the kind of good deed that you want to pass up. So, anyway, inshallah ta'ala, with that said, I'm gonna leave you guys before this guy gets upset. Open the box. Yeah, bro, we're gonna unbox you soon as the quickly man. stops, man. Just be patient, bro. Hasten this one, bro. Anyway, patient, listen, bro. Before, look at me gets upset. I have to bounce. But the link is below if you don't wanna donate, inshallah ta'ala, so we can spread this da'wah. Listen, shut up, we're gonna spread this da'wah. Everywhere, inshallah ta'ala. Everywhere that Allah allows us to speak. Of course, we can't do it each and every single place before we get a little reputation. Oh my God, he's everywhere. Joke is. Salam alaikum.